Um, hi Gabrielle, thank you Hello. very much for joining us, joining us in this uh, rather wonderful very exciting little room, room right? in the middle of Newcastle. Probably the best room in Newcastle. Very actually. glamorous. Um, so, um, last year things changed for you pretty significantly. Um, after you were signed to Parlophone, um, you released your first single, Power of Love. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got that, that thing? Um, it was very random. We actually had... Um, I planned to release my first single, Please Say so You Love Me, and then um, I got asked to do The Power of Love like two days before the deadline, they still haven't found anyone to do it, and they asked me and I did it literally in one take and handed it in because I had a few hours to do it, and um, they picked it, and that was all it was, and I was a massive fan of the adverts anyway, so um, it was just such an honour to be involved with it. It's a very whirlwind, whirlwind few days then for you, I guess. Well, it was actually, it was... <laughs> It was already sorted, like, recorded and done, and the, the advert was already done, like, summer last year. So by the time it came around, it kind of already happened in that sense. I was just waiting for people to know about it. And then since that moment now, you've been, I imagine it's been a pretty intense 12 months. Yeah, I haven't stopped. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's been great, though. Like, we um, did, like, my first kind of proper tour with my band this time last year, and we haven't stopped touring since. Yeah. Can you um, remember your highest moment of the last year? Mm, there's been so many. Um, Glastonbury was a bit of a moment because it's my local festival mm. and um, it was just amazing to be there and to have a full tent of people kind of supporting you. It's amazing. And in the, in the polar opposite, what was the most surreal thing you've experienced then over the last year as a result of everything that's happened? Surreal? Yeah. Um, I just got off tour with John Mayer, which isn't something I thought I'd be doing. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and kind of meeting him and stuff was quite cool. Yeah. Um, going back a few years for those that perhaps don't know, you beforehand, you um, started your exploration of performance on YouTube, mm. uh, uploading both covers and originals um, in your bedroom. Was there a motivation behind choosing to use YouTube? No, I didn't a... know what I think people did. My friend put up the first one, um, and I checked back like a few weeks later and it had a load of views, so I was just experimenting with it. And mm. I wanted to do music, but I didn't think that would be my way into the industry um. at all. And those songs that you picked to perform the covers that you did, was there any reason why you picked those, or was it just your sort of songs that you liked at the songs time? Songs that I liked, yeah. yeah. I love just playing different things, and I think playing other people's songs is a really good way to develop your own writing. Mm. And you, you wrote your own songs as well during that yeah. whole period. Um, they seem quite personal, is that, is that a fair assumption to make? Yeah, um, I, I can only really write about real things. I love writing poems, and I love kind of all sorts of medias of art, of art and stuff so I think for me it was just kind of writing poems about stuff that I've experienced and putting it to music. Yeah I've seen some of your poetry on I think it was Tumblr ah. that you've written, very good. Thank you. Um, do you, when you look back at those days on YouTube, is it with fondness? I, I liked, I, I was trying to think of a word to call you and I've decided to call you a recovering bedroom artist. <laughs> um, do you look back at that time with fondness or is it a little bit cringy sometimes? No, complete fondness. And I think it's really cool that like, even though I've improved loads since those videos, it's cool that they're online. It's like a timeline and a kind of, yeah. you can see how everything's developed. And I think it's really cool. Awesome. Uh, so last year you released your first full length studio album, English Rain, which was uh, very well received. What was your favourite track on that album and, and why? Oh, Tough I don't question. know. Yeah, I mean, it changes from time to time. At the moment, it's probably How Do You Feel Today. Um, I was really proud of the lyrics and I loved, I was really like listening to a lot of bands like Elbow and The National, a lot of choral music at the time, and I found that the arrangement with kind of the horns and the strings and the orchestra on it, was, I was just really proud of and it, I, I still love listening to it. So. And why English Rain? Why English Rain is the title? And um, theme throughout the whole album. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lyric in the song November and it was just something I was like, this could be a cool title like it wasn't good and I, then I was going to call it Laughter of Guns which is a lyric in How Do You Feel Today um, and then I couldn't choose between the two and then we did the photo the photo shoot for the album cover and we ended up using the umbrella photo and um, I th found that the that this, the kind of orchestral arrangements and stuff that we recorded onto the album at the end of, of the process was very kind of it sounded really English wartime and had that kind of feel to it and I just thought it felt right to call it that brilliant that's really, that's really interesting Going back to this whole hectic 12 months, um, you've been gigging pretty intensely. Mm. Um, is that is that something that demands a lot from you physically and mentally? Or Yeah. Is it very fun? Like, very cool? Oh, it's so fun. Yeah. I've got the best band. They're all my best friends. Um, but yeah, like you really need to look after yourself. Like 
if people tell you they go out and do drugs and get drunk every night on tour and have the best time, they blatantly don't. Yeah. Like, otherwise they would just kill themselves. Early to bed every night, is it? Yeah, oh yeah, straight <laughs> off, off, off stage into the bus, go to sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, we were just admiring your bus outside and it's much better than our local... Uh, really? The local service, yeah. Uh, Fred, so. um, she didn't show up today. <laughs> Uh, is there any uh, like funny things that you need to do before you go on stage or funny things that you ask for um, I suppose you have that right I guess yeah I'm quite laid back I don't really mind if I'm honest I always have a cup of tea and I always have to have a little five minutes on my own and I have to warm up but apart from that I'm, like, there's nothing weird um, earlier this year I saw you in Sheffield and you were talking about your label your old label Never Fades mm. and you said that you were taking people on board um, yeah what can we see what we, can we expect in regard with that um, well I'm not really signing people I'm just funding things for people okay. so I um, funded an, like an EP and a single for um, an artist called St Raymond and we've just signed him to, uh, to Warner which is very exciting and I'm working with a girl called Hannah Grace who's actually doing backing vocals for me at the moment mm. but she's an incredible soul kind of jazz singer that I'm working with at the moment as well and then after this uh, period of gigs are over, what, what does the future hold? More gigging or back um, to studio album? After this too? tour, I go on a tour of Southeast Asia um, up until Christmas. So mm. um, And then hopefully next year we'll go into a start with America. My album's not out there yet, so... Okay, so you're going to continue just... Continue this whole, this, how, this whole experience, but in the US. Brilliant. I've got a few uh, really quick questions. We're, we're almost on. done. <laughs> just sort of like, just to get to know you a little better. Okay. Um, what is your favourite film? Oh no! They're all like driving this. lessons. Okay, it's amazing. With, it's got uh, Julie Walters, and Rupert, Rupert Grint. Grint. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. yeah. And uh, what's your favourite band slash artist right about now? My favourite artist of all time is Joni Mitchell, but I think my favourite band at the moment, actually, my favourite artist at the moment probably Feist. I was listening to her album The Reminder, and it's just amazing. Favourite food? Everything. Everything. I just love Not food. curry. I just had a curry. Actually. Yeah, we know that we saw it. Uh, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like sometimes I think I, I'm a bit obsessed with Whole Foods, so I'll go in there and just buy random things. If it tastes nice and it's really healthy, I'm obsessed with it. So, are you a good cook? Do you enjoy? Cooking? Yeah, I love cooking because I'm never I'm never at home. So when I do get to go home and cook for myself, I really make the most. Uh, have you had a chance to explore Newcastle? I spent a lot of time here. My boyfriend, dad, my boyfriend's dad lives here, so I've, I'm always up here. Oh, that's good. Um, and yeah, I, I spend a lot of time here. If you could perform with one person or one group, living or dead, who would it be and why? Do you know, after seeing John Mayer play every night, probably him. Yeah. <laughs> Just again and again and again then. Forever. Yeah, forever. Yeah, awesome. Um, if you weren't doing this, what would you want to do? What, what did you want to be when you were younger? Uh, I wanted to be translator. Really? Yeah. Ah, interesting. <laughs> Simpsons or Family Guy? Family Guy. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Harry Potter. X Factor and Voice? X Factor. Um, what's the weirdest thing you've ever received from a fan? Um, one gave me a cigarette and asked me to smoke it with him. That seems quite sweet, to be honest. Quite sweet. Yeah. Didn't want Not to. that we haven't got weird fans, I No, and then he asked me to sign a part of his body that you don't show people in public. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your, what colour is your toothbrush? Uh, it's white and blue. White and blue, cool. Mm -hmm. How's Ferris doing? He's pretty good, yeah, loving life. How many followers has he got now? Well, I don't do his Twitter. Twitter, I don't know. You don't know? No. Not you, is it? <laughs> no, it's not me, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's all I've, I've written down. Um, I wanted to ask you about, um, I'm doing marine biology and fisheries. Awesome. And I saw you were, I can't remember the name of that charity, the Surf. Surfers Against Sewage. Yeah. Can you, why, why that? Um, I grew up on the southwest coast, um, and it's not just for surfers. A lot of people think that that charity is just focusing on surfers having nice water to surf in, and it's not. It's um, the, like the environment as well as the water, the pollution, and especially the wildlife. And um, I, I find like kind of anim like animal charities really kind of they just get me. Yeah. I just want to be involved, and um, it's something that kind of ties in where I'm from, what I love doing, the environment that I grew up in and wildlife um, but I just, I just really care about it and it focuses on all the areas that really get me yeah it's a really, uh, I think it's an important issue so it's good to have someone you know yeah. um, right I think that's it thank you very much Gabriella danke danke enjoy your um, performance and thank good luck. you thank you cheers